His, 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 uh, and, and this gets to a very odd issue, which is that mm. you have wielded taste and beauty as a weapon your entire life. Your drawings are among the most compelling. I remember the first time, one, one of the things I've done using our friend Joe Rogan's program mm -hmm. is to push out discussion of the hop vibration because it's, an, it's the only non-trivial principle bundle that can be visually seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And since the world seems to be about principle bundles, it's a bit odd that the general population doesn't know that stuff of which we are. Yes, well, the, the hop vibration or the Clifford parallels was instrumental in the subject of twister theory. Well, but the, the first time I ever saw a diagram, it was somebody reproducing a diagram they had seen of yours. And so yeah. the way in which you have used art and sketches yeah, well, has I drew been it transformative. The yeah. picture was drawn by hand. Largely, I mean, there were, I think, some circles involved, which I use a compass for. But basically, I drew it by hand. I, there were two versions of it. The first one was more... I, I sort of threaded it. I, I, the first one was had more circles in it, and I thought I'd draw a little more simply the second version. Well, actually, I had three versions. The third version is in the uh, Road to Reality. But um, I'm not sure it's the best. I think the second version perhaps is the best. So, so Dirac, getting back to it, had this elegance of mind yep. that was unrelenting. Yes. And he famously brought in these bizarre objects with which some of us are obsessed, others of us don't understand the obsession, called spinners, which yes, sort of are yeah. a prerequisite to getting to twister theory, which you've popularized. Well, sort when of. I, I went to the... Uh, you see, Dirac gave a course of lectures in quantum mechanics, and the first course was sort of basic quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. And the second course was on quantum field theory, but also spinners. And there's an interesting story about that, which I don't know the answer to. In the second course, he deviated from his normal course of lectures. Now, I understood when I, I talked to Graham Farmelow, who wrote this biography of Dirac, um, I understood from Graham Farmelow that when I d described that Dirac deviated from his normal course to give two or three lectures on two component spinners, which for me were absolutely what I needed. You see, I'd learned from my work on algebraic geometry, which ended up by trying to understand tensor systems as ab abstract systems and things which you can't represent in terms of components. And I should just say that in terms of these two component spinners you're talking yeah. about, for the lay audience, the <laughs> All of the matter that they think about, whether it's in bound up in electrons or the quarks that make up protons and neutrons, uh, if you think of these things as waves, which many people in our audience will be familiar with that concept, the question is, what are they? Wa what medium are they waves in? And there, the medium would be a medium of spinners, which is not something that's easy for people to understand. Yeah, well, it's they're not, and certainly the formalism. You see, Dennis. I, I told him I need to understand about spinners, and particularly the, two, the simplest ones are these two component spinners. And he suggested I read this book by Corson. So I got the book by Corson, and I found it completely incomprehensible. Just the, I mean, it was a fascinating book because it, it was very comprehensive. It described all these different spins, fields, and different things like that, and using a lot of two component spinners, which is the right way to do it. But to introduce what these objects were was almost incomprehensible, I found. Mainly because you have these translation symbols all over the place and they mess up the, the appearance of the formulae. So I just found this thing very complicated and un incomprehensible. But then I went to Dirac's second course. It may have been not the same year. I think he went one year, I did the first and maybe the second course was when I was a research fellow rather than when I was a graduate student. I can't quite remember. I think it must have been when I was a, graduate, a research fellow. Anyway, he, he, this was a course on quantum field theory and things like that. But he sort of deviated from his normal uh, course 
in one week to talk about two component spinners. And for, for me, this was exactly what I needed. It made the whole subject clear from this complete confusion that I had before. Now then you see, many years later, I talked to Graham Farmelow and I told him the story. And he said, that's very strange. Dirac would never deviate from his course. He just, he thought when he got his course perfect, it was perfect, he would never change. And this was true of his first year course, the, first, the, the shorter, the initial course, which I went to, which people often said to me, well, that's not such a great course, it's exactly like his book. Well, I hadn't read his book, so to me, this was, <laughs> sure, the book is amazing too. <laughs> but not having read the book, I found this course absolutely stunning, and it made, made things absolutely... Do you think Dirac actually understand, understood these objects, these most mysterious of objects? component spinners. Spinners in general. I mean, he brought yeah, them into so. physics. Yeah. They'd yeah. been previously found inside of mathematics, I think by people like Killing and Lee, I'm not sure who. Yes. But... Cartan was the Cartan, one. perhaps. I don't think, I mean, let me throw out a really dangerous idea. <laughs> I don't think any of us understand them at all. And the part of the problem was, is that he understood very well what could be said about them. Yeah. But that, if you know, I asked you before about like your favorite film, you said 2001. You could yeah. make an argument that spinners are in mathematics and physics, like the monolith, it's always encountered. Nobody ever understands exactly what it means, but it always grabs your attention because mm. it seems so absolutely bizarre and highly conserved. Well, I always like to think of things geometrically and uh, at least for the two component ones. You see, when you go up to high dimensions, you still have spinners. But the spinners, the dimension of the spinners goes up exponentially. So each time you add the two to the dimension of the space, and the dimension of the spinners is multiplied by two. So, so get, dimension 2D, for example, yeah. you'd get spinners of dimension two to the D over two. Yeah, that's the sort of thing, that's right. And so the, the well, the, usually one talks about the Dirac spinners, which are the four dimension, the four the full spinners. Right, right, right. But they split into these two, two and two. In even dimensions. Yes, that's right, in even dimensions. And, uh, I like to understand these things geometrically. So you could see what the two components spinner represented. I had this picture of a of a flag. So you have the flagpole goes along the light cone. So that's a that's the vector like piece of it. Yeah, it's a vector a, a null. And vector. then you have an extra piece of data. An extra piece which is this flag plane. Mm. And you you get a pretty good geometrical understanding. The one little catch to it is that if you rotate it through Hundred three hundred uh, three hundred and sixty degrees. So you might think just to where it started, it's not the same as it was before. It's it's changed its sign, and then you rotate it again. So well, that won't make any sense to anyone. <laughs> but if I mean, one way of looking at that is if you have a Klein bottle. And yes. For those of some people will be listening to this in audio, some watching it in video. <laughs> okay. A Klein bottle, in a certain sense, that can be made precise, has a square root that would be a torus, that is yes, a double cover. Right. Yes, yes. So it seems like a very weird thing to take a square root of a strange topological Mobius-like object, mm. but there you are. Yeah. So it's really the square root of the rotations that yeah. has this double effect, but we say it linguistically in a way that makes it almost impossible for anyone to understand. Well, I think this was a mystery. I mean, I understood that a spinner was the square root of a vector, you see, and I couldn't make head or tail of that idea. And it was when I went to Dirac's course, it did become clear. And he made he gave this very Im impressive illustration, which I thought was due to Dirac. I learned later it was due to Hermann Weyl. Mm. But you imagine a cone, circular mm. cone, so yes. in space like that, circular cross section, and another equal cone, which rolls on it. So one is fixed, and the other one rolls around on it. Now, you see, when you imagine initially, the cone is almost a, uh, just a little spike. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a tiny circle at the end. And when you roll one on the other, it's like rolling one coin on the other coin. So, you, And you can see, when you roll one coin on another coin, it goes around twice. It goes it, it, 720 degrees as you go around. Okay. Now, when, then you imagine gradually increasing the angle, the semi-angle of the cone. And you do it again. You keep 
mm-hmm. thinking of that motion, until it becomes almost flat. So it's, and then what's the other one? It's just a little wobble. Right. So when it becomes flat, this motion goes to nothing. So this illustrates how a rotation through 4 pi, right. two complete rotations, gradually can be deformed into no rotation at all. However, with single rotation, it doesn't disappear. Well, I think with a with a pulley system in a wheel, we don't have any trouble imagining a wheel that rotates twice as fast, half as fast, not okay. at all, hooked up to one particular crank wheel, right? Yes. The problem comes when um, that that's not the generic case. The generic case is usually encountered one dimension higher, three and up, has a familiar because something called well, the fundamental need, group has its structure of Z mod yes. two, yeah. um, rather than Z in, yes. in dimension two. So there is something where in the place where you can see this most easily, it's slightly misleading. And then in higher dimensions, you have to learn how to tutor your intuition, which is this problem that all of us who try to think about higher dimensional objects encounter is that we have to use the visual cortex we're handed and then we have to trick it into imagining worlds beyond where we've seen. But you see, Dirac had another thing that I'd... Uh, there's a thing called the Dirac scissors problem. Mm. So you imagine a chair with, which has the um, pieces of wood going up like this, yeah. and you have a, a pair of scissors. I think this is Dirac's joke that it was a pair of scissors. And through the, the, uh, the where you put your fingers, you have a piece of string which goes through this and then goes around the chair and then comes back through the other one and goes back again. Right. Now the problem is you take the scissors and you rotate them through 360, 360 and degrees and the string's all tangled up. You can't untangle Whatever it. you do, you can't untangle it. You're allowed to move the scissors around parallel, not right. rotate them. And you can move the string around it and you can't undo it. But you do twice, 300, 720 degrees, two complete rotations, and then you find you can un- untangle it. So this was the Dirac scissors problem. And I think the, the, tr- the joke was it's a pair of scissors. So if you get so frustrated, you, you, you just, just cut, cut the, the string. Yes. Yeah. And he wrote a paper explaining that, I think Max Newman yeah. wrote a paper. Dirac did this as an illustration of how you can undo it when it's, when it's right. four pi. 720 degrees, but to prove that you couldn't do it with this is, I think it, okay, well, Max Newman had a Have you seen this it. video called Air on the Dirac String, which illustrates this in video form? Oh, I haven't seen the I would highly recommend it because it, it, it shows this yeah. off as the similarity <laughs> to the belt trick, the Philippine yes. wine glass dance, yes, the well is, all yeah, of the these wine different glasses. versions. Yeah, I find I could do that one, actually. <laughs> yes. I had Joe Rogan try it. And he, I think he got almost all the way around. Yeah, No, I, I've, I've done it with a glass with yeah. water. Yes, you go like that and it comes back. Very stylish. 